Leaving my campsite on Evelyn Lake, heading towards Donald Lake. Seven portages to go, 15 kilometers, and I'm heading out at 9.30. Okay. They're wishing me well on my voyage. Evelyn Lake is just beautiful. It's a little gem. I think it flies under the radar. Nobody ever talks about it. I think it's in the shadow of Lady Evelyn Lake, um, which is further north of here. But it's a beautiful, beautiful little lake, and I'd love to return one day and spend more time here. And so began my journey to the fabled Donald Lake beginning with a 700 meter portage into a little gem, Irish Lake. Then a 360 meter walk into Bone Steel Lake, followed by a short 100 meter walk to Wessel Lake with an absolutely beautiful takeout. After pausing to admire the beauty here, I paddled halfway down Wessel Lake to the takeout for the 150 meter portage into Flume. A 580 meter portage from Flume Lake into the northeast arm of Madamagassi. With five portages and swarms of mosquitoes behind me, I welcomed the open spaces and the breeze of Madamagassi. This is the 230 meter portage between McCarthy Bay and Gold Lake. Portage number six of the day. I'm on Gold Lake now, beautiful little lake. Just finished the 230 meter portage. At the start of the day, I said I had seven. I have eight portages today. So I have two more to go, a 150 and a 120 it looks like. So not bad, but we're slowly getting there to Donald Lake. It is gonna be just an amazing sight when I finally do get to see it. And it'll be great uh, finding the spot that I'm gonna set up camp for the next three or four days and just get to relax and fish, it'll be wonderful. This is the 150 meter portage between Gold Lake into Colin Scott. Second last portage of the day. This is Colin Scott Lake and it is absolutely beautiful. It's a magnificent looking lake, crystal clear water, pristine, pristine lake, it's so beautiful. This is a lake you absolutely have to see absolutely stunning it's breathtaking it's the water is crystal clear blue just beautiful beautiful water and it feels completely untouched it feels totally serene and it's absolutely spectacular last portage of the day a 150 out of beautiful Colin Scott Lake into what is supposed to be beautiful Donald Lake Last one of eight today.
So it's a tradition when you come to Donald Lake from this way that you carve your name on this rock. And there's some really old signatures on here. Um, I should say, John from Backcountry Angling Ontario, um, his channel has been one of the most influential to me and it's absolutely one of my favorite channels to watch on YouTube. His videos were actually the inspiration for me to come to Donald Lake in the first place. And this is actually where he carved his name on the back of the stone. So I think I'll put mine over here somewhere and uh, it'll be etched in here for hopefully a long time. If you haven't watched John's channel at Backcountry Angling Ontario, it's an absolute must. If you're a fisherman or a canoeist, you have to check out his channel. John called this heaven on earth and right now it sure feels that way to me. Okay, I have settled on a home for the next three or four days. Um, on the very north end of Donald Lake, there's a little peninsula that comes out. It would be on the east side. Um, and it's, it's just a beautiful site. There's uh, perfect water access here. There's a nice point that goes out that's gonna be exposed to any north or south wind. And um, that for me is, is really big this time of year, um, just because of the bugs and everything. I wanted some exposure. Um, I know that down that way, um, on the other side of that point, there's supposed to be a really beautiful site on a point there, but um, it wouldn't be exposed to any north winds. So I want to try and keep the bugs at a minimum. So I'll give you a little tour. Since I'm here for three to four days um, and I have no idea what the weather's going to be, I just wanted to take precautions and put a tarp up. So this is the hot core uh, still nylon tarp. It's a larger size. I think it's 12 by 9. So, yeah, and then of course I got my handy dandy bug shelter attached to the ridge line up there with my chair so I can have coffee bug free if the bugs are out. And my tent is over here, Thunderbox is back there, and I feel like it's a dandy sight. Really nice fire pit here. The rock further out there is uh, going to be good for shore fishing hopefully, which I hope to try soon. It's still quite windy to take the canoe out. I'm not sure if I'm going to take the canoe out and go fishing tonight. I have lots of time to do that, so I might just fish offshore and relax. Uh, I still have to get my bed set up and everything like that in the tent, but... All the work to get here was so worth it. It's so... It's so beautiful. I can't stress it enough. So, if you guys are wondering about this uh, buff on my head, I discovered that with the uh, mosquito netting that uh, goes under my hat and then my hat goes over top of it, it sits really tight to your head. There's an elastic band around the top. And what I found was by just having it on and by having my hat on that I was getting bitten by bugs constantly right around my ears and my ears were just getting torn apart. So um, I put this on today just like this and then put my mosquito net on and then put my hat on and I didn't get bit on my ears once. So. There's a little tip for you if uh, you want to avoid mosquito bites on your ears. Okay, well, I did some shore fishing after my bath there. And uh, I got one little smallie and then I got sick of being absolutely swarmed by these flies. So, yeah, I called her quits. The wind's still ripping pretty good. So, yeah, I don't feel like taking the canoe out there. I got lots of time for that and I'm not going to rush that or anything. So, um, it's a shame because there's a couple of good spots for fishing here. But even when uh, the wind is going, these flies seem in the evening, they're just so aggressive and the wind doesn't phase them at all. So... Anyways, it is what it is. So I'm gonna sit in my bug shelter for the evening, watch the sunset. I'm facing it perfectly here. Got my wine. And probably just gonna call this one a night. So quite an epic day of travel. Thanks for coming along with me. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you watching. If you're still watching these videos for the Tomogamy uh, series, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been an epic trip so far and I hope for some good fishing here to come on Donald Lake.
life on this trip so far. Absolutely crazy winds. I'm glad I got to fish a bit this morning. And early afternoon over here where it was kind of sheltered. But now the wind is so strong, it's gusting all the way down this north shore of the peninsula where I was catching those fish, making it nearly impossible to fish there too. I think my day of fishing is done, but at least I caught some fish. And uh, yeah, I'm not taking the canoe out again today. Well, these winds have just been raging like mad ever since I showed you guys that clip there when I came back in from fishing and um, I've been reinforcing kind of the tent and the tarp and everything else um, unfortunately a lot of crap blew in the tent because the rain fly when it comes down it doesn't go all the way down to the ground so a lot of stuff was blowing underneath and up through the mesh door here unfortunately but is what it is so tents pretty filthy and um, it's always a battle every night to get in without letting the flies in and tonight uh, I did it as fast as I could and I lost. Check this out. These are all inside my tent. I'm trying to kill them one at a time, <laughs> but it's a big job. Ah. Morning of day seven. It's really disheartening. These 30 kilometer to 40 kilometer an hour south winds have not let up. Here's the lake. And I'm stuck here again. I'm starting to get worried a little bit because I really need to try and get out of here tomorrow. And I thought these winds would let up overnight. And I awoke in the night to my the stuff in my overhead compartment falling on me because the wind just pushed the side of the tent in so much and all that stuff just fell on me and woke me up. So I woke up, I got out and I rearranged my tent so that it's facing more into the wind as opposed to broadside. And yeah, I thought after one day of raging fury, the winds would peter out, but they have decided to keep going and thus uh, make me windbound here again. So yeah, the fury of Donald Lake, the fury of Tomogamy. I needed a change of perspective. After all, I chose to be here. I retreated to the leeward northern side of my peninsula campsite and set up a living space. As the morning passed by, I began to shift my focus to just being present here in the moment. Nature is still beautiful. This day was a chance for me to sit and watch the magic of nature in motion and to try and capture it as best as I can. 
despite this day not going the way I had planned. I learned what it meant to be here now, to be present in the moment, content and satisfied. Smalley. Not as good as the one yesterday, but still something. I'm not getting the size I thought I'd get on this trip, but I'm getting some numbers. I'm catching some fish and I'm killing some time today on this crazy windblown day. I can go around and pick a few off here and there and kill some time. I'm happy with that. Green pumpkin tube jigs have caught everything so far. I know there are some really big fish on Donald Lake. I know there's five, probably six pound smallies here. Big Lakers. And I really have no doubt that if conditions were different than what they are, and I would be able to actually explore and fish more of the lake, as opposed to sticking so tight to just this one little side here, that uh, I would come into some better fish, but you know what? It is what it is, and I had a couple goals this trip. One was just to do it, um, and to do it during peak bug season, <laughs> so I would know what that's like and never have to do one the first week of June again. I came as prepared as I could be, and and it, it, uh, it's been awful at, at some points, but... You know what, overall it's just been a hell of an experience for sure. Another goal I had for this trip was to catch lake trout. Um, I've never caught lake trout before, so I've caught in a few now, like, I don't know, four or five, and um, not big ones, but they suit me fine. Another goal was to um, have lake trout for supper, and I did that. So. Really, I've accomplished all the goals that I set for this trip, other than finishing it and being able to get out and go home. So that's the last thing, and that's what I hope to do tomorrow. Good morning. It's the morning of day eight. Uh, I've been up since 5.30. Uh, I've already had coffee and my oatmeal. And as you can probably hear, there is still a wind, there is still a south wind, but uh, it seems to be changing. It's not as strong. Um, the skies are moving out of the north now, moving towards the south, so it kind of leads me to think that maybe the wind is going to change. But either way, I'm, uh, I'm booking it out and I'm going to go as far as I can. And uh, if I can make it to uh, across McCarthy Bay, on the west side of McCarthy Bay, right when it goes into the northeast arm of Madamagassi, there's a campsite there. And uh, once I get there, I can evaluate if I can paddle the whole rest of the way south down the Madamagassi or not. Um, we'll see, I suppose. But anyways, it's been raining off and on this morning, so I'm going to put the waterproof case on and hopefully be out of here soon. I'm on beautiful Colin Scott Lake. And it feels to me like the winds have shifted to westerly now. I think... 
over the course of the morning, they were working their way from south to southwesterly to now, I think, directly out of the west. And it may not be helpful at the moment, but once I begin the southerly portion of my journey today, I should be able to paddle along the west shore, and it shouldn't be too much trouble. I'll certainly take the west winds over the 40k south winds that we've had for the last two days. After an exhausting white knuckle paddle into the headwinds across McCarthy Bay, finally the southern portion of my journey was beginning and the winds began to shift. Tailwind. The winds, which had been against me for so many days, were finally at my back. I was overjoyed and I happily rode the winds all the way home. What goes through your mind in a moment like this, ending an epic trip? Just like when this trip began, I had mixed emotions. It's hard to explain, but sorrow that the journey was finished, mixed with happiness that the journey was completed, and victory, victory, and joy. What an absolutely epic journey that was. Eight days solo, tomogamy, the heart of black fly and bug season. I battled through some of the worst winds like ever. This is a memorable first solo trip. This is a memorable trip period, but as a first solo trip, I feel really good. I feel really happy. If you've been watching these videos, thank you so much. Feel free to leave a comment and uh, um, let me know what you would have done in my situation with the winds and stuff like that. Um, so I'm still a, a novice canoeist at best, so I'd love to learn. And I thank you so much for watching, and <sighs> I'm glad I'm here. I'll see you on the next one.